If you ask me, the ideal Washington Commanders 2024 schedule starts on the road. I'll tell you why that is and more on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. You are Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this episode of Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listener, your first view today and every day. And don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this podcast and you can continue this conversation with me by becoming a Locked On Commanders insider. Just go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. Sign up today to be an insider. And from there, you'll get news analysis, one-on-one conversations with me via text message. No hashtags, no apps, no filters, none of that stuff. Just text messages from me to you and from you to me. Lots of cool stuff going on over there. So become a Locked On Commanders insider today. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders and shoot me a text. I am David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for CommanderGameDay.com, a part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers and everydayers. As always, I appreciate your continued support for the show. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create your account, use the promo code LOCKEDONNFL to get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. On today's episode, we are going over Washington Commanders' ideal schedule features. These are I'm not going to lay out an entire... 17 game regular season schedule, but I'm going to tell you some of the ideal features that a Washington commander schedule could possess once it comes out next week. Uh, it was supposed to come out today. It was supposed to come out on Thursday, May 9th. Uh, but unfortunately, the NFL had to delay the schedule release. Don't know why the schedule release was delayed, but it is what it is. Still, I figured it's a good thing to talk about, a fun thing to talk about. So we'll start off uh, this or we'll get close to the end of this week talking about this topic here. And we're going to start off that conversation looking at The openers, right? We always want to talk about the openers. The first game of the season is always incredibly exciting, incredibly fun. And for the Washington Commanders, if you ask me, the schedule will start off the best if it starts off on the road. I'll get to that here in just a minute. And for those who don't know how the NFL makes their schedule, right? So obviously every year, every team plays every team in their division twice. They play them once at home. They play them once on the road. So for the NFC East, the Washington Commanders, you play the Dallas Cowboys, at home and on the road, you play the Philadelphia Eagles at home and on the road, and you play the New York Giants at home and on the road. And then every single division plays another division every single year, right? So this year, the NFC East is playing the NFC South. So two of those NFC South teams will be at home. That's Carolina Panthers and Atlanta Falcons for the Commanders. Two of those NFC South teams will be on the road. That's the Buccaneers and the New Orleans Saints. Now, the Cowboys also play all four NFC South teams, so do the Giants, so do the Eagles. Some are at home, some are away. They don't have the same away and home schedules, right? That's not necessarily the thing. But then you also play a division on the AFC side. This year, that's the AFC North. So you've got matchups against the Steelers, the Browns, the Bengals, and the Baltimore Ravens. And again, for the Commanders at home, it's the Steelers and the Browns. On the road, it's the Ravens and the Bengals. And then you have two other teams from another division where you play the same uh, finishing, right? So for the NFC East, it's the NFC West for the Washington Commanders. They they finished fourth in the NFC East, so they play the team that finished fourth in the NFC West last year, which was the Arizona Cardinals, which the Washington Commanders will play on the road. And then the AFC South, same thing. They play the same, the the team that finished last in the AFC South last year, which was the Tennessee Titans. Uh, So they'll play them this year at home uh, as part of that schedule. So that's how the NFL does their scheduling. You play all your division opponents. Each division plays two separate divisions, one in the AFC, one in the NFC. And then each division plays another division, but you don't play that entire division. You play the team that finished in the same place in their division that you've played in your division, if that makes sense. So hopefully all that makes sense. That's how you get the teams that you're going to play in the season. So next season, again, they'll play two other divisions, a full NFC division, a full AFC division. And then there will be one AFC division, one NFC division where the commanders will play the team that finishes in the same place in that division as they do in the NFC East. And that's how you'll form your opponents for 2025, so on uh, and so forth. And they rotate. So, you know, you'll play every single division in the NFC, NFC and AFC every three to four years uh, at a minimum. So uh, the Commanders 2024 opponents at home, they will host this year the Dallas Cowboys, New York Giants, Philadelphia Eagles, of course, as part of the NFC East division. Uh, they'll also host the Chicago Bears, Carolina Panthers, Atlanta Falcons, Pittsburgh Steelers, Cleveland Browns, and the Tennessee Titans on the road. The Washington Commanders will visit the Cowboys, Giants, and Eagles. And they'll also visit the Baltimore Ravens, 
the New Orleans Saints, the Arizona Cardinals, the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This year, the NFC has nine home games, eight road games. So nine home games for the Washington Commanders, eight games on the road, uh, again, for the Washington Commanders. They are tied for 16th in strength of schedule. And, of course, strength of schedule right now goes off of last year's winning percentages. Uh, In total, the Washington Commanders opponents this year had a .502 win percentage last year, so barely over 50% of their games. Uh, where one that puts some 16th in the, in the in the league right now, right in the middle. However, it's important to remember three of those teams, the New York Giants, the Arizona Cardinals, and Cincinnati Bengals, all played a large portion of their seasons without their starting quarterbacks. Daniel Jones, Kyler Murray, Joe Burrow were all injured for significant portions of last year. So really four of those games, right? Two against the Giants, one against the Cardinals, one against the Bengals, are going to theoretically at least be against teams who are better last year, this year, than they were last year because of their starting quarterbacks being healthy again, assuming that they are healthy, at least when they play against the Washington Commanders. So, uh, and as much as we might want to laugh at that factor with Daniel Jones specifically, it's hard to do that when Daniel Jones has a five, one in one record against the Washington Commanders in his career. But Washington is not going to have to see Daniel Jones for a little while, at least in my opinion, I think, because I think the commanders are going to start the season on the road. And I think they're going to do so in Dallas for opening weekend uh, Washington has opened at home each of the past four seasons. That's a really long run. I don't know how it compares to every other team in the National Football League, but there's no denying that opening up at home four years in a row is pretty cool, uh, a pretty, pretty, pretty uh, convenient thing for the Washington Commanders, right? All of those home openers have been against non-divisional opponents. The last time they started the season on the road was in 2019, and it was against a divisional opponent in the Philadelphia Eagles. And for me, it just makes sense, all the sense in the world for the NFL to start Washington on the road this year. Again, don't give them that fifth straight home opener. I mean, I'm not going to complain about it. If it happens, I'd much rather drive to Commander's Field, whatever it's going to be named by then, uh, than fly somewhere else and be away from my family for the weekend. But I just don't see it happening. And so if you think about where is it most advantageous for the NFL to start the Washington Commanders on the road this year, the Dallas Cowboys just make all the sense in the world. It's the return of Dan Quinn, former defense coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys, now head coach of the Washington Commanders. He and coach Joe Witt Jr., who was a significant part of that defensive staff in Dallas, now the defense coordinator here in Washington. They return to the Dallas Cowboys home lair. Uh, they bring some of those Cowboys players back with them. They've got the number two overall uh, pick quarterback, uh, young, you know, star in the making, Jaden Daniels. Bring him to Dallas, bring him to Jerry's world, into AT&T against the big, bad Dallas Cowboys. Uh, it's just a good opening week storyline on top of that, you also have the differences in these two teams just this offseason alone. You've got Washington, a team that literally made the most roster turnover of, of any, any NFL team this year, completely revamped its entire organizational structure, going in against a team whose owner, Jerry Jones, said, we're all in this offseason, and then proceeded to basically do nothing but lose players and lose coaches. So if Dallas wins, it's vindication for Jerry in the NFL and the Dallas Cowboys fan base, and they get to go crazy. And of course, and as much as we hate to admit it, that's always good for business in the NFL. They get to prop up Dak Prescott for at least another week or two. If they lose, then the media firestorm around Dallas. I mean, you already hear Skip Bayless just throwing a tantrum about the inactivity this offseason, the quote-unquote all-in and all that stuff. All of that comes right back up to the surface. And the futures of Coach Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott now come into the spotlight immediately uh, for Washington a win in Dallas using Dallas's old coaches and some of their old players is obviously a big win for them, for Josh Harris. Uh, and of course, who doesn't love getting a win over the Dallas Cowboys to start the NFL season, right? So to me, it just makes sense for all those reasons. Washington Commanders, again, four straight home openers the last four years. Ron Rivera never had to start the season on the road. So it just kind of makes sense that the NFL would make this new regime have to start on the road. But there are still other candidates and there are other, also primetime games we're going to talk about back-to-back road games, and obviously bye weeks that we need to discuss as well. A lot of potential schedule features here for the Washington Commanders this year. I'm going to get into two more opening week matchups that I think the, the NFL could see uh, or could, he could be enticed by to, to have the Washington Commanders start the season. We'll get to that here next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And this next segment is brought to us by our sponsor, BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off of our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially as someone who is unbiased in your life. So today, I want to say something about how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking the same thing 
this week. Potentially not. I don't know. There's sicknesses going around. I'm still kind of getting over mine. I feel great. I feel a lot better, but you can potentially still hear in my voice. I still got a little bit of uh, leftover symptoms, if you were, from the illness. And I don't, I don't think it's fair. We still have these residuals, like trying to get your voice back and all these other things. It's just annoying, right? It's just an annoying part of life that unfortunately we can't control. But I want to get that off my chest. So I'm glad I did. And I don't know, maybe you find it as annoying as I do that you feel great, you feel better, you're not sick anymore. But every time you talk to somebody, you still sound sick because you're still recovering your voice or whatever it is from being sick. If you think you're starting to thinking about getting therapy a try, give BetterHelp a try when you do it. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Helps you get things off your chest, big or small, serious or insignificant. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Thanks again for making Locked On Commanders your first listener, your first view today and every single day, every day. Just make sure you come back tomorrow. Later episode on Friday than usual, I will be out at Rookie Minicamp for the Washington Commanders. I'll do my episode following Rookie Minicamp, but I will have to do it from home. We're not going to be able to use the media annex there, so I'll have to leave Ashburn, drive home, do the episode when I get back so late. Friday episode, drop it. I'll also do one on Saturday as well, so come back for that. In the meantime, if you're watching Fox Sports and ESPN on your television all day and realize You've got to turn down the volume when all the shouting begins. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. Locked On Sports today is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every single day that brings you the biggest sports stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So we already 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 identified one uh, potential option, which I think honestly is the best option. Like if I'm the NFL and I look at the opportunity to send the Washington Commanders, Dan Quinn, all that stuff to the Dallas Cowboys uh, to start off the season, I just I take that opportunity uh, ten times out of ten. But it's obviously possible, even possibly likely, that that's not going to actually happen. So two other options for the opening week game for the Washington Commanders. I want to start with another road game uh, because I do think that the best thing for the Washington Commanders this season, and we're talking about ideal schedule features for the Washington Commanders. For me, the the number one ideal schedule feature for the Washington Commanders would be a road game to start the season. Uh, the next best one would be the Arizona Cardinals going on the road to the Arizona Cardinals. I would love this. It gets the West Coast trip out of the way uh, very, very early in the season. Obviously, very early, right off the bat, right? Uh, you get Kyler Murray versus Jaden Daniels. You get Kyler Murray versus Cliff Kingsbury and his new dual threat quarterback uh, in Washington. You also, if you're the NFL, you get to put that in an afternoon time slot on the East Coast, right? You probably get a 425, whatever it is, you know, East Coast PM uh, kickoff. And that allows you to give this otherwise undesirable matchup. I mean, you know, the Arizona Cardinals and, and Washington Mayors both picked in the top five in the NFL draft this year. So you have Marvin Harrison Jr. and all that stuff. But outside of that, you don't really have a whole lot of sexiness in this matchup. Uh, But you give that otherwise undesirable matchup to Fox in the afternoon and you get to, you know, use a time slot there uh, for that whole thing. So to me, it just it makes a lot of sense for the NFL, but also makes a lot of sense for the Washington Commanders and getting that road uh, West Coast trip out of the way early would be absolutely amazing for this team. Uh, in 2024. If there's a home option, I think the sexiest home option you probably look at is, of course, at home against the Chicago Bears, right? You've got Caleb Williams, the number one overall pick. The Chicago Bears did a lot of work uh, in the offseason to make sure that he has a lot of weapons. They got DJ Moore there. You got Keenan Allen there. Uh, They brought in Roma Dunze in the NFL draft. And then you also have Jaden Daniels, uh, of course, the number two pick. So you got number one versus number two right off the bat, opening up their year, open up their career. I mean, they're going to be matched up against each other. They're going to be compared against each other their entire careers. So you can go ahead and do that uh, if you want to. I think the NFL actually did this, if I remember correctly, when Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota uh, were drafted, um, one, number one and number two, I think that they actually started the Buccaneers and the Tennessee Titans off week one of the 2015 NFL season as well. Um, in fact, yeah, I actually just paused and, and looked it up, actually. So for, for you, no, no time at all. But I paused the recording, went ahead and looked it up. And, and yeah, Marcus Toe, 2015 NFL draft, Jameis Winston, number one overall. Uh, out of Florida State to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Marcus Mariota, number two overall from the Oregon Ducks to the Tennessee Titans. And the NFL did that week one, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Tennessee Titans. And I remember covering that game uh, at the time for a very small publication. But, you know, the thing I remember about that game that stood out was that, yeah, you had the number one versus number two overall storyline. And that was great. But the game itself was rather ugly. In fact, Jameis Winston, of course, throwing interceptions, uh, things like that. Marcus Mariota and the Titans got like a 42 to 10 win. Um, 
And it just outside of the storyline from the beginning of the game, the game itself was kind of rough. You know what I mean? And, and I suppose you get that really any week of the season, but I would like to see the NFL delay that game a little bit. Right. So either way, I would like to see the Washington Bears open on the road this year because I think that would be great for them. Opening on this road means that opening this season on the road means that the final 17 weeks of the season or the final 16 weeks uh, of, the, of, of the season, 16 games of the season, I should say, Washington has nine home games left and seven road games. So that's a great split uh, if you're Washington. So and then if you can get one of those longer road games out of the way, so Arizona or Dallas, the two longest road trips uh, of the year this year. Um, if you, it's not one of those, send them to New Orleans, send them to Tampa. Those are your four longest road trips, Arizona, Dallas, New Orleans, and Tampa are the four longest trips the commanders have to take this year. So if you can get one of those four out of the way uh, in week one, that would be best. But that Chicago Bears game, like I said, I would not do that week one because both quarterbacks, you know, it's going to be their first regular season games. That's assuming that both of them are even starting. I mean, Caleb Williams is going to be starting. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious, but the Washington commanders, you never know. They could decide to roll Marcus Mariota out there to start the season. So if I'm the, if I'm the NFL I obviously want to get my number one versus my number two matchup in. If I can, I want to get it in fairly early. You know, the longer you go, the longer the chances of an injury, knock on wood, that doesn't happen, uh, come in. But I would probably hold off until week five, Thursday night football. That's going to be the first primetime game that I'm going to talk about. I think that week five, Thursday night football at home against the Chicago Bears, that is probably the best time for the NFL to put Jane Daniels and Caleb Williams on primetime against each other for one it's Thursday night football. We all hate Thursday night football, but it gets a crowd. It's going to bring a crowd to Thursday night football. You're going to get the USC crowd, the LSU crowd, the Chicago crowd, the Washington crowd. And then for all just the general NFL fans, it gives you something. It gives you something enticing to watch that Thursday night football game for. So I think that week five Thursday night football, it just makes the most sense. That's when the bears visit Washington and you put it under the lights and you get your number one versus your number two matchup before the weekend. Uh, another prime time possible uh, game for the Washington Commanders schedule, I think, is at Baltimore. I think that game could potentially be prime time. Obviously, the Baltimore Ravens are going to come in being one of the favorites to contend against the Kansas City Chiefs uh, to go to the Super Bowl this year. The Lamar Jackson comps that we had all offseason for uh, for Jane Daniels, even though I don't think the Lamar Jackson comp is really totally accurate. I like the Randall Cunningham comp. I like the Patrick Mahomes comp, uh, but the Lamar Jackson comps are there. They play in the DMV. They both play in the same area. So obviously it's, it's, it's the connection is just obvious, right? Uh, then you also obviously have at Dallas Cowboys on Thanksgiving, uh, probably the only primetime game that I'll never really hate, right? Like going to Thanksgiving last year uh, to see the commanders play the Cowboys and spending Thanksgiving with uncle Jerry uh, there at at and That was just a great experience, life experience. Um, so I wouldn't hate doing that again. I think that's a pretty obvious one. Also you have uh, the home game against Carolina Panthers, Bryce Young, Versus Jaden Daniels, they're friends. They're both young quarterbacks. They're both dual threat quarterbacks. Uh, the NFL looks at both of these guys as the potential, you know, stars of the future uh, to follow in line behind the guys like Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson and all that stuff. So you could see the NFL try to make this a Thursday night matchup, try to get that sexy quarterback matchup in there uh, to kind of entice the audiences to do that. So some interesting primetime options, of course. And then you've got the other divisional games, the Philadelphia Eagles, New York Giants, uh, the home game for Washington against the Dallas Cowboys could be a primetime game as well. So some interesting options for the NFL to choose from there. What about the bye week? What's the ideal bye week? What's the most likely bye week as far as I can see it? And then the dreaded back-to-back -back road trips. What could those look like in 2024 for the Washington Commanders? That's coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. And today's episode of Locked On Commanders is brought to you by Game Time. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. There's no basketball or hockey playoffs, unfortunately, right now in the DMV, but you can still get tickets to Major League Baseball. The next Nationals home game, you can get tickets for as little as $5, or you can catch the next Orioles home game for as low as $19. Last-minute deals will save you up to 60% off of buying tickets for last-minute sports, concerts, comedy, and theater. With game time, they also have flash deals that give you exclusive in-app options and deals, and you can take the guesswork out of buying tickets all with game time. Download the game time app, create your account, use the code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again Create your account, redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
Wrapping up today's episode of Locked On Commanders, talking about ideal Washington Commanders schedule features for the 2024 NFL schedule. Again, it was supposed to come out originally today, May 9th on Thursday, but was delayed by the NFL uh, reportedly until May 15th. So we've got to wait just a little bit longer for that to come out. But looking at the bye weeks now, we've already looked at the home opener options. We've already looked at primetime game options. Now we're looking at ideal bye weeks. The ideal bye week, pretty, pretty clearly, it's either week nine or week 10, right? You either play most of your games and then you get a break and then you play fewer games than you've already played or you play slightly less than half your games, get a break, play one more game than you played already and get your bye week uh, right there in the middle. That's the most ideal bye week for any NFL team. doesn't matter who you are. Uh, last year's bye week, the commander's bye week was in week 14 and that was brutal and that was brutal uh, for the players, for the coaches, obviously more than anybody else, but also brutal for us. I think brutal for fans as well. I think by the time week 14 came, uh, most people were just ready for the season to be over. Uh, 2021, uh, the commander's bye week was in week nine, 2020 was in week eight, 2019, week 10, 18 was week four, eight, 17 was week five, uh, going so on, so on, so forth. Um, there's no real pattern there for the Washington commanders, but I feel like the Washington commanders, honestly, and, and hopefully this is just me being a little bit pessimistic, maybe a little bit of residual, uh, not feeling good from the cold that I had, but I feel like they're due for a week four or five bye guys this year. I just, I just really do. And that's, I, I hope it doesn't happen. I hope they get an eight, nine or 10, you know, week by uh, something like that. But if they get a week four or five, I mean, that's going to be brutal, especially for a rookie quarterback, man. I mean, that's a lot of games to play in a row without a break. So hopefully the NFL does, does this rookie quarterback a favor. Give them again. I mean, week seven, even like week seven or week 12, like don't go week 14. Don't go week four. You know what I mean? Do something in there anywhere from like seven to 11 uh, is acceptable, I think, but hopefully it's, it's week nine or 10. Uh, like we said, and then of course you got your dreaded back-to-back road games, right? Every NFL team, uh, you know, nobody plays home away, home away, home away, home away. You're going to have a back-to-back uh, road session. The worst case scenario for a back-to-back road game would be on the road to Arizona and then on the road to Dallas, vice versa on the road to Dallas, on the road to Arizona. It doesn't really matter. Um, if that happened, actually, I would actually kind of wonder if the team would just find a facility to house their players and their team and do practices and just stay kind of on that side of the country for the week. Uh, instead of coming back to Virginia and actually potentially actually even worse one would be like down to New Orleans and then out to Arizona. You know what I mean? Cause they're not even geographically located. You pretty much have to, like if you go to Arizona and then you go to New Orleans, you pretty much have to come back to Virginia. It doesn't really make sense, you know, not to. So that would actually possibly be even worse uh, than having to do that. But those are your four longest road trips this year, Arizona, Dallas, New Orleans, and Tampa are your four longest road trips. Uh, so same thing. If you had to go to like New Orleans one week, come home, go to Tampa the next week, that would be a little bit painful as well as back-to-back. I think the best back-to-back road games uh, you get this year would be at Philly and then at Baltimore. And in that order, honestly, at, like Philly's a little bit longer of a, of a trip than Baltimore is. So take that trip to Philly, take the long trip to Philly, play that game, come home, then play in Baltimore the next week. And maybe if you're lucky, you get Baltimore in prime time, like Sunday night or Monday night football. So that's actually even a longer break before that quote unquote road game. That would be the best uh, back-to-back road game scenario for the Washington commanders. And for, you know, for me personally, just being a little bit selfish there, as long as that primetime game is not on a Thursday night again. But I mean, even if you had to, I mean, if you had to do say at Philly Sunday morning, early afternoon, and then at Baltimore Thursday night, like if you're going to get, you know, your Thursday night game, if that's the case, if it's, it's a home or then at Baltimore, uh, you know what I mean? Then, or at Baltimore and then at home, that's, that's the most advantageous way to get your Thursday night football game in there. Uh, that would be cool. I mean, what if I mean, you could get, say at say at home against the Giants, right? One week and then in Philly for one week and then uh, at home or then at Baltimore for Thursday night, that would give you uh, an even better spread there and going into that pseudo bye week. So some interesting options on the Washington Commander schedule again, ranked tied for number 16 in strength of schedule. So right in the middle uh, of the pack, which, you know, again, depending on health and depending on everything else, uh, will impact them uh, greatly or not in, not at all, potentially. But some opener ideas, some primetime ideas, bye week ideas, back-to-back road game ideas. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Less than a week, we'll find out what the actual schedule is. And, of course, we'll break that down when it comes out, react to all of that. Coming up tomorrow, we will have some insight and observations from Rookie Camp. In the meantime, if you've got questions or comments, just throw them in the YouTube comments section or text me directly as a Locked On Commanders Insider. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders to get in on that today. Don't forget, also check out Locked On Sports today, the first ever 24-7 live streaming sports channel on YouTube. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. Every day, thanks for coming through on a regular basis like you do. 
Until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.